everybody we are just waiting for Anne Marie to join us she has joined us Anne Marie if you send a request in hey so I hope everyone is looking forward to our first live hello, hello. Oh my God, look at you. I'm on a different life today. Oh, look at you looking all lovely. Got all the, the red lipstick on. I know you too, but you know what? Red lipstick makes me feel good about myself. Don't ask me why, but it does. That's good, that's good. That's what we need. So we've got a couple and of my, my grandma's right here with me as well. Oh, that's lovely. Really, really lovely. So we'll just give it a little bit more time. We'll give it a couple of minutes. Yeah. Some more people to join us. How's your day been? Uh, busy. Good. Good, busy. Yeah. And I managed to get some shopping done. How were the queues? <laughs> Sorry? How were the queues? Oh, you know what? Tesco Extra is always great. Not too many queues. So I love it. You're just in and out. Ooh, excellent. Okay, so I think we've got a good couple of people coming in and a couple more people will join us afterwards. So how about we get started? Let's get started. Okay, so hi everyone that's here joining us. Thank you very much to for joining us today on Unlocked UK. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Martha de Costa Sherwood. I'm a business consultant and transformational coach. My background is in education, but I'm now in the personal development field. Um, and over to you, Amory. Hi. Sorry, just get my hair back. I um, am a counsellor, psychotherapist. I didn't start there. Um, I was in management, global retail um and i'm in the art of transforming people's minds so yeah we're working together to see how much impact we can have um in our community yeah definitely me and amory are in an accountability group and we kind of feed off each other so i'm the person i've got lots to say but amory's like yes martha but give me the specifics give me the date when's it going to be done by you're not going to be blagging me um, and so in, the, in covid we had an idea about we really wanted to try and um, think about a way we could support the community and then we took a little bit of time because we both had our own individual projects to do and then we got to this point point. and so with everything that's been happening so far we really thought, okay, this is going to be a really important live to just talk about how you matter. So yes, we've got everything else, but what's the really important ways and what are the things that you can do to identify your inner greatness? Because that's what Lock Unlocked is all about. We think everybody is great. So identify that and then work out how you can use it. So the amazing Amory is going to lead on our first bit. <laughs> on silencing your mind the counsel yeah yes um because i'm all about the mind so i want us to really talk about um how you can silence your mind because one of the things that i've noticed just even in my own journey is that your mind can be so loud right it can be so loud with doubt it can be so loud with fear it can be so loud with anxiety that you feel powerless or you make choices that um, keep you stuck or allow you to go to a place of avoidance, right? Rather than um, noticing what is happening and just taking it on, right? Let me tell you something. Fear is a lie, right? And the reason why it's there is to keep you stuck, right? you there is nothing wrong with being uncomfortable okay uncomfortability is growth if you are not uncomfortable you're not going anywhere right so you have to get it in your mind that you can use fear to be your um to your best ability 
right? You can use fear to get you where you need to go, right? Fear is not supposed to keep you grounded. It's supposed to make you uncomfortable enough. I love you guys. There, there you go. Are we back? We're back. Okay. So, um, so that's why I want to talk about how you can um, silence your mind. So one of the um, things that I really want us to be aware of is that it's okay for us to experience stress, right? But stress is not supposed to be 24-7, okay? Because it messes with the chemicals in your brain, okay? And sometimes people allow stress to stay too long that it becomes a part of them, right? It becomes some, um, it, they, and they form habits around it. And these habits can be things like um, procrastination, um, avoidance, what, we, what I just mentioned, using um, your emotions like um, anger and sadness to deflect from yourself, so what you, you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to be a person that stays in stress 24 seven. Okay. So one of the things that you need to do is take care of yourself. Right. And that means exercise. Yeah, I know people always talk about exercise, blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying you need to go and join the gym, right? <laughs> what I'm saying is if you can stretch your foot, you know, and go for a little walk, Sit in the bloody park at this time of the year where it's really nice and warm. Go and sit in the park. Go and walk on the Thames, right? Do something that keeps you a bit active, that takes your mind off of what it is that you're worrying about or that you have fear around. I'm gonna, okay? Um, I'm going to second that because when you said the gym, Martha left the room because <laughs> I've decided I hate the gym. You know you've been doing. You know we do all that stuff. You've got to go to the gym. You've got to do all this thing. And I now realise who said no. I've got her? Where did this should come from? So I decided mm -mm. that I'm the gym. I'm not going to be going to that place. And so what I do every morning is a seven minute exercise. Now people look at me like I was really? just about to say that. I was yeah. going to say five minute exercise. Se yeah, that's what it. Is your uncle? Yeah, seven minutes. And whilst people might think, oh, that's nothing. You've got to come and do loads more seven minutes is more than zero so rather than me worrying and stressing and saying oh no i can't bother to do a 30 minute exercise that you're never going to do you know every morning you wake up and you say okay yeah. i'm going to do this exercise i'm going to do this ex and you never do it seven minutes is easy yeah you don't i mean you, seriously you do not need to join the gym okay what you need to do is stimulate your mind yeah I'm telling you, seven minutes, I was going for five. Seven minutes is perfect, right? Because it gets your mind active. And perfect if you can do it first thing in the morning, right? right. That you get up. If you want to get up 10 minutes earlier just to do a seven-minute hit, you are setting yourself up for the day because it releases chemicals in your mind that gets you feeling positive and active yeah so i recommend it if you if you if you if you if you if you can't do that then i mean go for walks yeah when you're on your lunch break at work um or even quarantine and you're at home working from home take your breaks right and just go outside and get some sunshine okay and then come back in 10 minute walk so um someone has said but if you're a little bit overweight, seven minutes might not be enough. What do you reckon to that? Um, you are worrying about something else. And I that is taking you away from what it is that you really want to concentrate on. Because now you're worrying about, if you're worrying about your weight and losing weight, that's a whole nother, um, nother realm, another aspect that needs um, a different focus. Mm -hmm. but what we're talking about is to keep your mind healthy and balanced is that you need to um incorporate some form of um exercise within your routine um if you want to lose weight of course i mean 
No, seven minutes, probably not. Um, and it's not just about exercise in regards to losing weight. It's about changing your lifestyle. And um, in regards to what we're talking about, about, you know, about business, about goals, about um, things that you want to do. Really, why we're saying seven minute exercise is because what we're trying to get you to do is change your lifestyle. In order for you to get to where you want, you have to change your lifestyle. You, you can't do it from your comfortable zone. Um, there's some, I think there were some comments there. Yeah. So someone said, well, but if you're overweight and you do nothing, then you'll still end up overweight. So seven minutes gives you something else to focus on. So yeah. So we've got that. So yeah. the first thing we've got silence in our mind is do some exercise. Yes. Okay. What's the, what's the next thing you recommend? Um, the next thing I recommend is a thing called cognitive distance, distancing. Okay. Because our mind is so loud, right? And what comes in is all our anxieties, all our fears, right? Things that, I mean, we start telling ourselves stories about what could happen, should have never happened, would have <laughs> happened. And we, we could go on for days. I mean, we're, we're real good storytellers, yes. right? But they are not facts. They are not facts. So things like, oh, there are no um, black women in sales. So it is impossible for me to um, really reach my goals and hit it. Forget it. Are there people in sales? Yes, there is. So that's what you need to focus on. There are people in sales. How did they get there? How yeah. did they do it? What kind of plans can I make? So that leads me to my third one, which is stay in the now. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? Your goal is um you want to be um i don't know a director of a uh, mental health service yeah okay now you're going to start thinking oh but all the odds are against me it's a i don't know it's a white um industry or middle class industry or um i don't have um the education and the skills to do it i'm never going to be good enough those things you're telling yourself all kinds of reasons why not okay you need to say why yes okay. because actually those are all the reasons why you should because what you've just named is there's no representation out there what That's you've funny. just what you've just named is that they lack um versatility there, there, there is a there is a need for people who understand me. So how do you stay in the now? So how do you stop your mind from traveling and getting all that anxiety? Focus on now, but also have a goal because you know you've got to do yeah. something. So, right. So you have the goal that you want to do this. You want to be a director of a mental health company, for example. Um, what do you need to get there? Okay, so not all the things that you don't have. What do I need, right? So if it's that you need to go and do your um um, you need to go to uni, or um, and I can hear it right now. Oh, but I don't. I didn't do my exams. I didn't do. Go and get a diploma. Go and get a diploma. Start there. Go and vo volunteer in any of these um agencies that um are looking for um people to support them in different various roles so that you can be in meetings and um grab information because actually human beings were sponges right because anything that's out there in the media we soak it up like nothing like we take it on that's why advertising works right That's so true. we are sponges That's yeah so don't so it's not that you can't you're not allowing yourself to be available mm -hmm. to get the information Excellent. so to silence your mind you've kind of got three things right so you're saying we need some physical 
energy activity to kind of get rid of anything else which helps in other areas so it's kind of like see our mind like our body so you know you need to exercise yeah. your mind you exercise your body so you exercise your mind yeah and then it's like okay cognitive distancing so basically stop stop telling ourselves lies focus on the actual facts <laughs> exactly the stories that we're telling ourselves the lies the <laughs> lies that's what i call it the lies actually yeah name it let's call it a lie so we know what we're so doing damn we lie. Lie to ourselves and then focus on now because you've got to deal with the present and that's our mind right. kind of focused yeah yeah and then oh i see black queens hi thanks <laughs> <laughs> um also what i want to say is be honest label things be honest with what it is that you're feeling so someone says um okay not every situation is a situation to um <laughs> like <laughs> let out your life right mm -hmm. but if someone says to you right and this is a funny thing this is this is a fact you ask someone how are you you're okay. expecting them to say okay mm -hmm. what is that how is that possible everybody yeah. you say hi to is okay because we're not really uh, i think how are you has become the new hi we don't actually mean genuinely how are you it's just hi exactly but this is the thing um we're so disconnected with each other that actually we don't really want to know because we got our own shit going on mm. right but if someone if if you you need to be honest with yourself and not necessarily oh you need to um say to um jane and whoever else is out there but with yourself right when you check in with yourself how am i today right if you're not okay you're not okay if you're angry, you're angry. If you're sad, you're sad. Label it. What is the feeling that you have right now? Give it a label. Give it a name. I am worrying. What are you worrying about? Then you can start to explore it. Because if you say you're okay, then that's the part of the avoidance. Because you can, can just put it under the carpet. Right? You, you, you don't open the letters that say you need to pay your bills. You just push it under the carpet okay so how is that going to get paid please tell me right please tell me mm -hmm. how are you going to get to where you need to get to with your bad credit score it's not going to happen mm -hmm. right so you need to start addressing things because there's always a way okay maybe you don't have a hundred pounds right now but if you open that letter and you made that call they would let you pay 10 pounds you pay ten pounds today. You pay ten pounds next week, and that hundred pounds is gone, and it's not a burden, right? It's not gone from a hundred pounds to five hundred pounds. Yeah, right. Because that's what happens in life. I'm using money as a symbol, but that's what happens. You have an issue, and then you go, "I'm just not going to deal with that." Yeah. So that's a but that's a different type of lie that we tell ourselves, right? So the other one lie yeah, is cool. we go ahead into something else and start worrying about things that we can't control. But then the other lie is is we're not honest with ourselves where we are in the present and dealing yeah. with how we're feeling so that we can right. move forward. Yeah. And um because we're so used to covering up our emotions. Oh, you know, we have to show or we have to um, be this kind of person. Who said? You're, 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 when you're, what you're doing is making yourself sick. Mm -hmm. It will affect your mental health if you are not honest with yourself. Right? No one likes to be around liars. So can you imagine how uncomfortable you are sitting with yourself so, knowing that you're yeah, a damn that's liar? True. That's true. That <laughs> girl. Ooh. That is the truth. So but um, says, how do I differentiate the facts from the lies that I'm telling myself? So you have to do you have to do with something that I call fact testing. Okay. So if you're saying, um, for example, um, I don't know, there is no. I, let me talk from my 
um, profession. There are no um, black mental health professionals or, or black psychotherapists or counsellors. You, you're lying. Go and fact test that because I'm sure you're going to find one or two, right? And then what you can do is research. Like, check it out. How did they get there? Send them a DM. Slide in. Girl, I see what you're doing. What you're doing is great. I've been thinking about this myself. What did you do? You got to put yourself out there. Yeah. So basically what that really is, is often we go to an extreme, right? So it's not necessarily there aren't none out there, but it's probably very challenging. So the thing that we want to do is quite challenging. And so we've decided, well, if I say that person doesn't exist and I can't get there, then I don't have to worry about doing the hard work or the potential rejection that might come with that whole process. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, so that's the on. silence in your mind. Yes. Part. So, and I could go on for days. Yeah, you can. Okay. You had, <laughs> you had your 20 minutes of glory. Okay. Oh, girl. <laughs> so, the, so the next part of it, once you know, it's important. It start everything starts in your mind. So it's really important, particularly in this current climate, that your mind is in a good space. So you've got all those strategies to kind of silence your mind so that you can be effective. But how do you really unlock your inner greatness? How do you? So you've silenced it now. You've stopped lying to yourself. We're in a good space. So what do you do? And so the first thing you need to do is identify your strengths. We're not, we're not dealing with areas of improvement right about now because we are very good at identifying what we're not good at. So we're mm. saying focus on your strengths. What are you good at? And, and there's, there's spectrums, right? So there are people who lack the confidence to, and say, I'm, I'm, there's nothing I'm good at. And there's people who are, very, yeah. who are very confident and kind of feel they can probably do everything. We're trying to find a middle ground here because sometimes of both course. of those extremes are problematic. There's no such thing as you're good at nothing. And there's no such thing as you're excellent at every single thing. You're probably a no. jack of all trades. No room for growth. Right. So it's really important that you identify your strengths. So how do you do this? So typically work is one of the biggest areas. I'm... I don't think it's the, it's the most important area because I think there's other stuff around it, but let's start there. Think about what is it at work that you do really well? What are the things that you have accomplished? Because that's a really, that's a big deal. One of the biggest things that no one does is take heed of their accomplishments. When it comes to you doing your CV, that's when you start to try and rack your brain. Okay, what is it that I did? Oh, what did I do at this job? I did this here. I did that there. No. Keep a track regularly, regularly of the things that you complete and the things that you do. If you think about the amount of throwaway um, um, congratulations or awards or praises that you've received at work, if you had wrote them all down, you'd probably be feeling really good about yourself. So something I'm saying is you need to identify your strengths and in those areas, check them regularly. Don't wait until you're looking for a new job. And then you've decided, okay, yeah, I need to think about what I'm good at. So think about the accomplishments that you've achieved. Think mm. back to things that you like doing. Because often, if you like doing something, you're going to spend more time doing it. You're going to you're going to hone in that craft. You're going to do really, really well. So what are the things that you like doing? And this doesn't have to be to do with work. Remember, this is your strengths. And there are ways that you can use everything that you do to benefit you later. So what is it that you like doing? So me, I have always been a talker. I've always been a talker. I've always been that person who's got something to say. So going into teaching, that was just second nature. It was just definite. Yeah. Where I was gonna go. Yeah. So that's what I liked doing. And so it helps me there. So what were the things as a kid, think back to that time when you were a child, what were the things that you really loved doing? Because, again, sometimes, particularly in our community, if it's not necessarily academia, there might have been some things that we were really good at. But you know those things that were like, mm, art, 
you want to do what? Wait, how much? Why? Why? <laughs> Why? You want to draw? 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 <laughs> you, want, you want to be a singer? You want to, you know, so there may have been things that you were really good at. And like art is the creativity is a real big, like now everyone understands the importance of creativity. So listen, that was, that was, that was one of the things of silence your mind. Use creativity to silence your mind. Yeah. Definitely. Right. So, um, yeah, think about back to when you were a child. What things were you good at? Because that's going to probably let you... And that will probably be one of those things when you realise, you know, if you're a little bit unhappy in your job or there's areas you're not really doing, it's probably because you're not doing the things you actually intuitively like doing. Yeah, so go back to your childhood. Literally, go, go um, that far. The other thing is, and I find this, Think about the things that you're actually, you're good at. Because sometimes mm -hmm. there's a difference between what you're good at doing and what you like doing, right? So often people, I'm, I'm quite, I'm a bit bossy. I'm one of those people, you come in and if I see things are not happening, I need to get things in order. But in the workplace, I actually don't want to be a leader. So I realized leadership's not really for me. All of the kind of PC and you've got to act a particular manner and all that stuff. It's not, I don't like the kind of male gaze over leadership. So it's not something that I particularly enjoy in a corporate business sense, but it's something that I'm good at. So it's important to identify that because sometimes the things you like and the things you're good at are two totally different mm. things. And it's important. Because that thing you're good at might be something that you can capitalize on and you can use to excel you in another place. So as well as that, think about the things that you're good at. You know, um, so if you don't know, I'm, I've, I've, I've got dyslexia and I found that out pretty late, um, like literally as I was doing my um, dissertation at university. So, I mean, I'm still like an academic geek. I love all that stuff, but it does, it takes a lot out of me to do work and like write up things or, or and I make little mistakes and I see things and sometimes when I see people like skim through something or just throw something quickly I look at them like how did you do that because that's not one of my strengths but for example when we were doing our um marketing I'm really like threw together our logo you were like well Martha you did that really quick because it was something that I was good at so Think about those things that you don't pay any mind to at all because mm -hmm. oh, it's a hobby, you know, or it's just something I do on the side. That's a talent of yours. So, so make, a, make a note of it. So can I just, yeah, we've got some questions here. Yep. Um, Donna, oh, sorry, it's because I'm not leading. Hold on. Donna says, does the society I live in influence my strength in a way? What's the solution if yes? Yeah, I mean, of course. yeah, that's a good question. And your society and culture definitely influences um, who we are, right? Because we focus yeah. on, we focus on different things. Yeah. So, so as we've identified, we are very much academia. We probably crush the creativity side um, in our area. And I think as adults now, what I'd say as adults now, just go back and really speak to yourself and say, what is it that I like doing? Start there. What is it that I like doing? Okay. What is it that I'm intuitively good at? And check if that is in alignment with the path that you're taking yourself down. And if it isn't, if it isn't, it's not too late. It's never, ever too late. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it's never too late for you to say, well, actually... The things that I'm currently doing, I, this is not something that's making me happy. And there's the other things that I enjoy doing or there's other areas that I'm really good at that I could get into. Now, we're adults. So we've all got bills to pay. So it may not be possible for you to just change career, stop, drop it and do all of it. But you can do it side by side. You know, working, working the other way around now, you know, like the five to niners and, our, you know, that extra hustle and your side hustle. That's the new thing now. So yeah. you could hone that and get into that by doing it alongside what you're currently doing and make yourself get better in the areas and the things that you want to do. 
so that you later on can drop what you're currently doing and then move on to the 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 knowledge or the skills or the activity that you really enjoy and want to do um was uh, hopefully that was answered for you donna um what gives ooh, what gives some folks joy is money because they have been deprived from childhood so what gives me joy may not be bring money now this is a problem yeah. okay um can i just add something sorry i just yeah. want to jump in right this is another lie <laughs> this is another lie I it's agree. not I'm not, I'm not too sure how people are going to be impressed you just be out here calling them liars <laughs> <laughs> well i mean listen look at this right you said you are a talker right and you love talking right i if you know me i'm a talker too i love talking right and i love supporting and helping people right now who knew right i could have i i could think oh do you know what you know there's not really much you know scope for for me all i do is just have talks with my friends and that's about it no you have to be able to see that this is your purpose in life my purpose is to help people how can i tap into that mm -hmm. that it makes me money right i love fashion it makes me feel so good. I like helping people put garments together. How can I home in on that, that it makes me money? I like drawing. How can I tap into it? I ain't yeah. an artist. I'm not an artist. I am looking for someone who can bring my idea to life. Yeah. It is, it's not a problem. A, there's a big misconception so those of you who've seen it, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, okay? And it yeah. talks about our different needs. And at the bottom of that is your physiological, your basic needs, right? And then we go up to, so you go up to include things such as your social needs um, and your esteem and um, getting kind of responsibility and then you get to self actualization yeah. yeah. And I think a yeah. lot of the time with money, the mistake that people make, um, particularly if you've come from poverty, right? is you misunderstand the fact of once that need has been met, right? Once that need has been met, money is no longer your motivator. So we money is the currency of the world. So I'm not saying, right, that if you're starving or you, you've got a hole in your roof and there's all this, all this crazy stuff happening that you're going to go off and say, okay, I want to be an artist. I'm going to be a painter. And I'm going to be happy. No, that's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is, once you've got the basics and the foundations which you need to get to so once you've got food clothes shelter water and that basic stuff or, or even living comfortably to a level of comfort once you've done that money's not going to be your motivator because what will you do you'll just buy more stuff once you've bought everything once you've got everything once you've done everything what do you want to do with more money so once you take yourself away from that kind of limited scarcity mindset that kind of survival poor right? yeah poor take mindset away, yeah take away yourself from that right and then think about what's my actual what's the highest level i can be at and what is it that i want often we need money i say don't chase the money my thing is don't chase the money because it's that's just the means of getting it. don't chase the money chase the thing it is that you're trying to achieve and whatever that is so me I want to be able to travel the world. I want to be able to go out and do all that. So yes, I, I can have money. But as a teacher, I was also restricted because we have very fixed um, holiday periods. So whilst I may have had the money to travel, there was also a little bit of limitation. So when I mm. became self-employed, a part of that, I wasn't chasing money. I was chasing freedom. I was chasing flexibility. So... I'd say don't don't chase the money. Really, um, don't chase the money. The money, the money will come. Um, like what you're saying, the money will come. You have to trust the process, right? Because if you are doing what is your purpose in life, you have to trust it. Because you, we, I, we had a conversation earlier, and you said believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. it, it, I know it sounds simple, but it is the catalyst 
that um takes you onto where you need to go because you're allowing the fear of not having the poor mindset to yeah. keep you stuck you can't do that at all at all you can't you, you really you really can't so identify folk don't worry so this whole the world the economy economy economics is man-made the economy is man-made money is man it's all lies it's all it's a a system that we are a part of okay and yes you need to know how to navigate around it but you need to realize that there's a purpose for it so this whole scarcity mindset lack mindset fear we need to get rid of it so you've identified how to silence your mind get back to kind of that peace we're now saying how do you really work with the greatness within and it's scary right it's it's really really scary because it goes against everything that we are taught we are taught to be employees we are taught to be servants we are taught to make sure that we we work in the system we contribute to the system that's how we're taught to be employed we're not taught to learn how to thrive in it to make the most mm. out of it do what we want without fear so you need to remove all of that and know that you are great within and sit in that and be scared of it like sit in it and feel it and feel like you know um Marion Williams be uncomfortable poem, yeah her poem is my favorite because and it's a favorite and that opening line is our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure like okay. we scare ourselves we think how do i have the audacity to think i can be do and have more than what i currently have more than what the society around me says i deserve and can have have the audacity to know that we are great so once you know you're great you've identified all the great things that you can do and please don't trivialize them the number one thing i say to people is this is not a comparison I'm not great. I'm, I, I think I'm great. I don't think I'm great because of. I don't think I'm great in comparison to this person. I'm great. Mm. Full stop. Full stop. Okay. End of. You're great. So don't trivialize your greatness. Don't be like, oh, yeah, um, yeah I'm really good at painting, but that's not going to be useful. No. Every, we all have a purpose. Everybody. Of course. Okay? Yeah. But like, hold on. In this coronavirus, didn't we learn how important um, the cleaners were? Didn't we all learn how important they were? Those people that we were just putting our nose down, we learned how important they were. So everybody has greatness inside of them. So please don't trivial it. Identify your greatness and own it. Once you know what you're great at and what all those areas are you're great at, what you then do is you become greater. You become exactly. Greater. And, and that's the, 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 the key point is that you understand your greatness and you you're you're continuously on this path of self-development right because life isn't stagnant right life is always moving but you want to stay stuck how does that even in your mindset how does that work right how does it work you recognize that you're great and then you always want to be greater you're yeah. always up in your level right learning from whoever right this, this we're on this platform and we're having a conversation with you but i guarantee you i'm telling you 100 percent. how i come into every conversation is i am going to learn something today i am going to learn from martha i'm going to learn from everyone who is on this platform that is asking a question that is telling me this is how they um see life or this is how they do something i am ready to open my mind to know that someone else knows something that i don't know and if i am available and i'm open to hearing and listening then i'm gonna be that much greater after i finish this conversation that's how i see life yeah definitely that's what we do so we've we've talked about you silence your mind and you start to start there we've then said that you identify what your greatness is so the, the, the title today is How Do You Matter Then? So how in the grand scheme of things then do you ensure that you're making an impact and you're important? And one of the things, you know, the serenity um, prayer that is, that's come about is that God grant me the serenity to accept 
the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. So um, in my preparation for today, I had a look at that because that was the kind of thing that really spoke to me. Because I'm like, realistically, when you think about changing the world, when we think about what's happening right about now, it's big. That's what makes us feel overwhelmed. It's too big. You can't, we can't, how, how is me, little old me, one person, going to end structural institutional racism? I'm not. But think it, but you know it's that big. And that makes you feel overwhelmed. That, dis that disempowers you. It makes you feel helpless. So no, I can't do that. So I have to own it and accept it. I can't change that thing. I've got no control over that. But I have control over me and my environment and my workplace and the people that I have influence around. And in my look at that, I realized that, found out that the serenity prayer originally, it started first with courage first. So the original player said, started first, give me the courage, because that's what it is, right? It was courage. And it was courage not to just change things that you can change, but it was change things that you should change. Okay? Yeah, and, and, accept, and accept the things that you can't. And then accept the things that you can't, right? But the, the big part of that is, it's very easy for us to look at a problem and think, okay, look, that's a problem. Here's the solution and feel really good about it. The yeah. difference is what we are currently dealing with, we're dealing with a climate of something that's really, really bad, but it shouldn't be like that. It really shouldn't be like that. And it needs to change. And each of us have something that we need to do. And what we need to do is we need to use our greatness we need to use our greatness to make impact and influence in our little areas. So we, we may not be able to impact the whole entire world, no, but we can start with one person at a time. So you start with your home, your immediate family, your friends, okay? You start um, in your workplace, you have influence there, and then you move on to your community. And that's how you make an impact. And I think the, the the number one way that you start by doing that, I say, is hone more skills, right? So you've identified the areas that you're great in. So I'm good at this thing or I like doing it. Refine that skill. Become an expert in that thing. Yeah? I'm, I'm, I love doing that. So when it comes to education, I'm an expert in education. It doesn't matter what title someone comes with, I'll have the argument in education because I have refined my skill in that area. When it comes to personal development and coaching and my business consultancy, all I'm ever doing is studying because I want to be the expert in that field. So whatever your thing is, refine it. Right. So I just want to read some of the comments, right? Mm -hmm. We've got um Donna says, Wow, that is so true. Living beyond survival, being L's. I think that's what it what I think it's L's. Yes, have the audacity. I love it. Then we've got don't compare your greatness with anything. There is no because. Um, this is good stuff. No one is a servant. No one is an enemy. Everyone is a master. I yeah. have to learn from everyone. That was Donna. What do I do if the solution is beyond my reach? Um, yes. Yeah. Um, for, for me, um, what, this is, okay, this is how I see things, right? Human beings, we're always wanting to control everything. We need to get that out of our head. You cannot control everything. Do you see what's going on out there in the world? Right? You can't control that. It is happening. Right? COVID-19, for example, is happening. Right? Police brutality is happening. You cannot control an individual or a virus. I think we learned that very well yeah <laughs> right so like martha said what you can is within you right and that's where you start stop trying to control the mass right because everything is a domino effect yeah you start with yourself you influence the next the next influence the next and it so it goes on right stop having this notion that we can be the be all and end all of everything and that I need to be this superhuman being. No, 
because guess what? Everyone needs support, right? I'm giving this message to you and having this conversation with you. And if there's anything in it that you feel makes sense, you hold on to that. And then you pass it on. That's how it works. Otherwise, there is no point. Do you see what I mean? I can't come into an, an environment and think, I, need, I have to command this whole thing. And it's all about me. Because essentially, that's what we're saying. Yeah. That I can control everything out there. Get that out of your head. Get it out. Because you are going to, you're going to, you'll get to a place of feeling defeated, feeling like life is hopeless, feeling like you have no power. So I would say get that out of your head. Yeah. I mean, because in reality, you can only control, I say this to people all the time, you can only control you. We can influence people. You have influence on people. But you can only control you. That's a question, right? That I see. So can who's that from? Yeah. Um else, can we all really be entrepreneurs? Some people need to be workers for the system to work. And I mean, as potentially it's true, but imagine it was this. Um, imagine the people that we hired to clean, yes, they're cleaning, but they own that cleaning company. Oh, and imagine the people that they get their products from are also the people that um, own something that's a very kind of higher level yeah imagine everybody owns something um but there's potential for everyone can be an entrepreneur but somewhere along the line people are going to be doing the work right because if you think about it an entrepreneur literally means a person who takes a risk they and they and that risk is often their money that's what an entrepreneur but is and and this is the thing um i think sometimes we get lost in those kind of like small titles and details right in order as um el said in order for the world to function we all hold a place yeah we all occupy space okay and you need to recognize that no space is unreachable reachable because we can all occupy space right in our own right we are all we are all self governing you don't have to do nothing that um i don't know what company you work for um the government um job center right you, you could turn up for work every day and not help a soul if you decided to that's a true fact right we're all self-governing okay we all have an entrepreneur in us right we all take risks at some point definitely the thing that keeps you stuck is when you decide that you don't want to take the risk to the next step, mm -hmm. right? Because in actual fact, in order for you to get a job, you've taken a risk, mm -hmm. right? And I'd also so, say that um, as much as we could potentially all be entrepreneurs, we don't need to be. There's some sort of there's some sort of kind of status politics that we have going on, as though we think what makes you important is your title because because you're educated or because you're yeah. a leader of something and like i said covid19 let us know what's really important right we mm. we're all important everybody has a place and a role in our whole community for it to work and so if we don't if we it doesn't matter what society says it doesn't matter what anybody else said all that matters is, is you are doing one what's something that makes you happy that you enjoy and you're fulfilling your purpose whatever that is yeah and you're i feel like that. don't yeah exactly and i feel like don't worry about that don't worry about oh we um i don't really want to be an entrepreneur what i like doing is this and so i don't fit in forget all of that do you right whatever is your purpose and your calling or wherever you like you do you right don't then say i don't want to be an entrepreneur because there are um 10 10 000 other people doing the same thing as as me they cannot do it like you yeah one and two let me tell you something you're lying to yourself you're just making justifications to be lazy yeah yeah not to not to fulfill your um potential because again that fear you're scared of your greatness we're scared of our greatness powerful beyond measure and with that this thing is about how do you matter you matter, matter in the world 
Okay, so I think we all need to understand that we matter. Every single person matters. And when you know that I matter, I'm important, okay, there's something that I'm doing here that's contributing to it, you, that's your responsibility. You have a responsibility to, to, to give us the talent that God gave you so that you, you matter, you're, you're important in whatever it is that you're doing along the way, whether it's your a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, a colleague, whatever it is, you matter, you're, you're important. And that's all you need to focus about. You don't matter because of what somebody else says. You need to understand why is it that you matter and what is your calling, okay? So I love it. I, I love it when people say to me, oh, do you know what, Martha? Um, I've heard something or this thing happened and you inspired me because I think that's one of the things that I'm here to do. So it shows that I'm using my purpose to do mm. the right thing. Exactly. Okay? That's what I, that's what I, I would, I would like everything that I do every day, whether I'm having fun or whether I'm leading something, I would like my vision, my values, my purpose to permeate through that. I'd like you to be able to say, yeah, this is what I got from her. This is what I'm learning. This is what I can tell about it because you matter. And that's what you're supposed to um, kind of give people. And if I go back to just to kind of, we're almost got like five minutes left. So if I go back to how that is, you matter. So you've honed your skill. That question, um, Donna, about how can you maybe fit things that are outside of your reach? I love the word synergize. So me and Anne-Marie are working together because we both had the similar idea. We both wanted to help people and we both wanted to kind of um, use the internet as a way so that it was effective, we could get a bigger reach and it was cost effective. So rather than us both doing lives, can you imagine both of us now live, sim we've got a similar friendship group, we've got a similar target audience, both of us live now today, Wednesday at 8.30, splitting our time, right? So no, we came together and we've synergized. So rather than Anne-Marie having 100 followers, Martha having 100 followers, Unlocked has 200 followers. We're not quite there yet. So make sure you spread and you tell everybody. But we... Like, share. Yeah, we synergize and we bounce off each other. You know, someone says something here, someone says something there. We pull it all together. One on one, don't add up to two of us. Adds up to five, not even three. Because we pull it all together and that's what you do. You make yeah. impact by adding lots of things together. And the final thing that I would say on how you make sure you matter is once you know you've identified your skill you've honed it you're collaborating with people give back give yeah. back it's the best way you can have an impact okay it costs you nothing it literally costs you nothing say, to a friend helping them with an application now that's something that i do in my job I, that would have been a charge that's i yes she's a friend fair enough but Give back, because that costs me nothing to do that. Right. And um, I just want to add the same, kind of like the same sentiment as what you're coming off with, because um, what I call it is um, kindness. Mm -hmm. So um, in order for you to show to yourself and others how you matter is being kind. It costs you nothing. Nothing. For you to, to, for someone to say, oh, how did you, um, how did you get to that um, stage in your um, work life? Nothing. Three minute conversation where you can direct someone to something that can be useful for them. Cost you nothing. Be kind, right? You spend too much time allowing anger to eat up and manifest and um, tear you down and tear other people down right be kind what i would also say that shows um you yourself that you matter is be honest with yourself that's what i started off with and that is what i will end with do not lie to yourself be very honest with yourself because if you're honest with yourself you give yourself the space the platform to explore what really is going on okay Stop lying to yourself because that's one of the things, you know, um, they say that you need to be true to your word. 
yeah so if you're a person right and you go um i'm gonna um give you a hundred pounds so you your child i'm gonna give you a hundred pounds right next week next week comes you don't give your child a hundred pounds child don't trust you yeah because what you're not true to your word be true to your word if you say you're gonna you've got a goal and you're gonna do something do it yeah that shows you that you matter because you're showing up for yourself yeah. right and then my third thing that i will say is don't be silent talk to people find your little support group your little hub yeah your safe space and talk yeah you 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 can't be one my one person on an island yeah because that's mental health illness right there yeah that's solitary confinement you will go mad yeah you need okay. to find Thank someone you. that Kim you can Kate talk been amazing ladies loving the energy your advice is so empowering uh, blue blade says i matter martha matters and everyone matters donna said your kindness overruns your rights and she says post the highlights reinforcing is key and then we've got keep being unapologetic you ladies love today's session so guys we are gonna sign out um we will be back in two weeks if there is anything in particular that you would want us to discuss or talk about just um send us a message let us know we have slide in but we'd love you to be involved as much as possible. It's been really good. Really love all the comments and everything in there. So please comment, like, follow, share. We are available on Insta as well as we'll be on YouTube and on the podcast platforms. So that's me out. Bye-bye. Bye. Love you.